What's going on guys? Welcome to Everything Always. My name is Michael Roman. Now while most of the Marvel fan collective, myself included, are focused on phases 4 and 5 and who the big bads may be there, Marvel Studios is gearing up to do something very interesting with one of its original villains in Loki, how they plan on keeping this iteration of the character in the Marvel Cinematic Universe but recasting him and no, they're not going to pull a war machine and simply trade from Terrence Howard over to Don Cheadle. We're going to explain this newest report, how this iteration of Loki, or at least the one who grabbed the Tesseract during Avengers Endgame will remain in the MCU, but a different actor will play him. And guys, it's not going to disappoint you the way that the headline reads. Trust me, when I first saw this this morning, I was shocked too. We're going to explain everything, but first, if you could grab the subscribe button, we're only a week away from giving away the very first Infinity Saga limited edition box set on New Year's Eve Eve. If you want to be entered to win either of the box sets or either of the PlayStation 4 Pros we're giving away here at the channel, all the same rules apply. Hit the subscribe button, then hit the notification bell leave a like and a comment on this video and if you want stick around to the end of the video we'll get into all the giveaway stuff again there now to be totally clear and before we start this story you are going to see tom hiddleston's loki in the mcu again at least in one series in 2021 that'll be his own television show set to take place after he snatched the tesseract during avengers endgame we know we will probably see him in doctor strange in the multiverse of madness as well if not the scarlet witch television show that will come out slightly before his own television Vision series. Either way, you're going to see him on the big screen and in a Disney Plus TV series that's Tom Hiddleston's Loki. But as this report implies, somewhere along the way and leading into Thor Love and Thunder, he'll start to shapeshift into his multiple forms, one of which being a kid Loki form. And when he does, for the final time, somewhere before or during Love and Thunder for Thor 4, he will get stuck in this kid form. Whoever the new actor playing that kid form will be will go on to play Loki in future MCU movies, at least for the time being, with the ultimate hope that one day he can shapeshift back into his regular adult Tom Hiddleston. Self. Now, obviously, the big takeaway here is that Loki would be in Thor 4 Love and Thunder, but I don't think there was anybody who didn't think that was on the table. Obviously, any staple to a good Thor movie is the inclusion in the interaction between him and his brother. But another huge question here is why they would choose to do this, if not specifically for narrative reasons, which could always be the case. They could have a specific story in mind where they need Tom Hiddleston's Loki to be a kid. Also, remember, the Tom Hiddleston that we followed through the majority of the Infinity Saga lost his life to the hands of Thanos, this new Tom Hiddleston that we'll be following, this new Loki will be reset all the way back to the events of Avengers 1, meaning it's not exactly the same character anyway, but again, the huge ask why they would choose to do this. Now, if it's for narrative reasons, that's understandable and that's yet to be foreseen, but it could easily go something like this. Tom Hiddleston jumps to somewhere along the timeline and he's going to have to face off against himself, much like there were two Captain Americas and two of every Avengers, every other point on the timeline, there's going to be another Loki. They might not want to have Tom Hiddleston pulling double duty and may see a more interesting way to do some of these scenes if he's interacting with his child self. It's just a suggestion, but it would make a lot of sense again from a narrative point of view, but sometimes the answer and the reason you're looking for are not that complicated at all or even tied up with the narrative, but rather have to do with real life factors outside of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, specifically Tom Hiddleston, Marvel Studios, and the future of what they're going to do with all of these movies. They're in a unique place where they can never really reboot these, they can never be cast. There will never be another Marvel Cinematic Universe Iron Man, rather there'll never be another Tony Stark. Much like Star Wars, the old movies will simply sit as canon and they'll build on them going from here. In a recent interview, Robert Downey Jr., and this was definitely echoed by Chris Evans as well, talking about you need to get out before they push you out and why it was time to leave. These actors have other ambitions, other things they want to do in life than stay in the Marvel Cinematic Universe forever. Now granted, some of them may, and I've even argued that eventually somewhere down the road, RDJ may show up as Iron Man again in a holographic form. Chris Evans may come back as Old Man Cap, but that's a decade or so off. The same may be for Tom Hiddleston, who just finished a run on Broadway. He can't play Loki forever. They can't keep including this character for another 20 years, or rather they can, but then think of the solution that they just came up with. They can have Loki get stuck in child form, have a new actor pick up that mantle, 
for the foreseeable future, let Tom Hiddleston be free to do other things, and when the calendar makes sense for both of them, or the project makes sense, they can unlock him from being in kid form, Tom Hiddleston can return to the role. Now I'm not saying they're going to do this for every character, and obviously for a lot of them they don't have to. Tom Holland's Spider-Man is just a kid in high school, Captain Marvel's just been introduced to the MCU within the last 24 months, and there's other prominent characters like Black Panther and Doctor Strange who have yet to see their sequel movie, but for Loki this isn't the case. He's been in almost every Avengers movie and Thor movie going back the better part of a decade, and for Tom Hiddleston, the actor, him being free to do other things with this newfound success is probably something he's eager to do, as well as keep it fresh from both Marvel Studios and his point of view. Having a kid actor come in and pick up some of the roles where they need that Loki character, look at it as an added bonus. Instead of them changing the character, look at it as though we could have no Loki at all, and now instead we will get some of the same character, and also try to remember it's not the same Loki we followed through his arc in the Infinity Saga. Again, we lost that Loki to Thanos. This is going to be a brand new character, still full of angst, still hating his brother, his family, and Asgard. Now one final thought I'll leave you with, something I touched on briefly during this video, is the double Loki problem and Loki having to face off against himself. Loki has an agenda and has had for quite a while the chip on his shoulder of not being able to become king in Asgard, never being as good as his brother, and then finding out that he's part frost giant has led him down a path where he wants to rule at all costs and anywhere, the biggest threat to Loki would be another Loki showing up. There's going to be some sort of interaction between the two of them, and again, if you make one of them a kid, if you have this current Loki using his shape-shifting abilities to maneuver that, then this could end up being a lot of fun when you have some relative unknown actors enacting their best Loki when we all know as the audience what to expect, especially from this super angsty version who's now wielding the unbridled force of the Tesseract. There's been a connection between these two the entirety of the Infinity Saga, so many scenes where you see him with it, and it's unclear whether he understood the full power of the Infinity Stone that was locked in his scepter during Avengers 1. He did some damage with it, but nowhere near the amount of damage he could have done. Now he has the Tesseract and no one to stop him. Previously in the timeline somewhere, maybe even before the Avengers are formed, it's going to be interesting to see if this doesn't lead into the Multiverse of Madness with Doctor Strange, even more so than the Scarlet Witch series. Yes, she's set to play a prominent role and probably the villain at that after Nightmare is able to turn her, but nestled between the release of the Scarlet Witch WandaVision TV show and the Multiverse of Madness is the release of this TV show as well. And with WandaVision and Loki both being listed for a spring 2021 release, they're going to be released either immediately sequentially or even concurrently as they're bookended by two major motion picture releases for Marvel Studios, obviously the latter of which is Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Can't help but wonder if Loki isn't going to do as much, if not more damage to the multiverse and also play an integral role in all of this. Either way, always remember the line that Loki left his brother and us the audience with, that the sun would shine on them again, and it appears as though Marvel Studios' way of making good on this is helping recast the character into a different form so he can continue on for at least another decade. Guys, let me know what you think in the comments about all of this. Obviously, given the power sets for some of these superheroes, they can't do that for every character, but for someone like Loki, they definitely can. Does it bother you at all that they would do this, and or does it actually help keep it fresh so that when we finally do get Tom Hiddleston back somewhere down the road, it'll make sense and be fresh for us, the audience, and for him? Remember, if you're feeling some sort of way about this, just think of it as extra Loki. They could write him out entirely as they're doing with a lot of the characters from the Infinity Saga, but they're going to keep them around in another form. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'm all ears, and quickly, let's get into the giveaway stuff before I let you go. Okay, we are just a week away from giving away our first Infinity Saga limited edition box set. These were limited to 4,000 in pre-production number and completely sold out in pre-sale. They're relisted on eBay for ridiculous amounts right now. We've gotten our hands on two here at the channel to give away, the first of which will be given away on New Year's Eve Eve. All you have to do to be entered to win is hit the subscribe button, then hit the notification bell with notifications turned on, leave a like and a comment on this video. The more videos you like and comment on because it's truly random, the better chance you have of winning. That'll also automatically enter you to win all the rest of the prizes we're giving away here at the channel, like the two PlayStation 4 Pros, the next of which is at the 550,000 subscriber mark, 
If you missed the two winners for the PS4 Pros at the 500,000 mark, all you have to do, scroll back through the channel. I always include it in the title somewhere and then announce all winners in video at the end. Again, all the same rules apply for either of the limited edition Infinity Saga box sets, the PlayStation 4 Pros, or any of the other prizes we're going to give away during the next year. And if you have been a fan here at the channel for a while, you should be pleased to hear we are going to double down on the number of prizes we're giving away next year. All you have to do to be entered to win all the same rules apply. Hit the subscribe button, then hit the notification bell with notifications turned on. Leave a like and a comment on this video that automatically enters you to win all the prizes given away. And because it's truly random, the more videos you like and comment on, the better chance you have of winning. If you're traveling through the end of the year and this holiday season, please be safe. And from the bottom of my heart, I cannot thank you guys enough for building the community at Everything Always through 2019. It means the world to me. My name's Michael Roman. This is Everything Always. Guys, stick around. We'll be posting again real, real soon. Thank <laughs> you.